Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second in our series of uh, videos looking at aspects of economic efficiency. This time we're going to take a focus on allocative efficiency. Well, what is it? Well, allocative efficiency is basically trying to reach a socially optimal allocation of scarce resources, a situation where no one can be made better off without making somebody else worse off, also known as Pareto efficiency or Pareto optimality. What we're trying to do is we're trying to use our scarce resources to get the maximum total benefits to both consumers and producers. Both agents are part of community. Allocative efficiency occurs when the value that consumers place on a good or service uh, reflected in the price that they're willing and able to pay. So it's when the value equals the marginal cost of the scarce resources used up in production. In competitive markets, the main condition required for allocative efficiency is that the market price equals the marginal cost of supply. Let's take a look initially at a competitive market and how allocative efficiency is achieved. Well, there's a demand and the supply curve here. The supply curve is the marginal cost curve and the demand curve reflects the willingness and the ability of consumers to pay for a good or service. Now, at the equilibrium price, price P, output T at point S, at that price, which clears the market, there's no, there's no shortage, there's no surplus, there's no disequilibrium. So at the market clearing price, the price equals the marginal cost. The, the price that people are paying equals marginal cost at that equilibrium. That generates some producer surplus, the area above the supply curve and below the price. Producer surplus equals area Q. P, S, and there's also some consumer surplus, the, dis the difference between what people are willing and able to pay and the price they actually pay. And that area of consumer surplus is area P, R, S. Now, why is this allocatively efficient? Well, because if we add together consumer and producer surplus, we get a concept known as community surplus. And this is a measure of the overall economic welfare in a market. And when the market clears and the price equals marginal cost, we're maximizing consumer and producer surplus. So allocative efficiency is the output which maximizes total welfare. At the market equilibrium price, consumer and producer surplus is maximized. Economic welfare is maximized. Now, that's using supply and demand analysis. How can we show allocative efficiency using cost and revenue curve analysis? The revenue curve analysis uh, and cost analysis that you might be familiar with as part of your year two or year 13 course in A-level or IB. Let's set this up then. Here's a, here's a downward sloping demand curve with a marginal revenue curve that's twice the gradient. Cuts the x-axis halfway point. And I'm going to assume just for the sake of simplicity... This is a simplifying assumption. I'm going to assume that the cost of supply for each unit in the market is constant. So this is the where the marginal cost equals the average cost of production. If you think back to your year 12 or year 1 micro, uh, that assumes the supply is perfectly elastic. Every unit can be supplied at the same marginal cost and the, the unit cost stays the same as a result. So we're not making a distinction between fixed and variable costs here. Now, that point shaded, or shown by the circle there, at that point, uh, that is an allocatively efficient output and price. Because the price equals marginal cost and demand equals supply. Average revenue equals average cost. If you had a monopoly that took control of the market, they would, assuming their profit maximizes, they would be able to squeeze output to Q1, a lower output, and raise price to the monopoly price shown in this diagram, because of course they can then control the price at which the product is sold. Now because of that, the monopoly price in the market, compared to the competitive price, will be well above marginal cost. Consequence is that the firm is able to extract consumer surplus and turn it into monopoly profit, effectively producer surplus, uh, you're left with uh, a loss of welfare 
because the price is above marginal cost, that leads to allocative inefficiency. The price is being charged because of the market power of the monopolist is above the marginal cost. And as a result, higher prices restricts output to Q1. Higher prices also reduces the real uh, incomes of consumers. And there is also a deadweight welfare loss because the output's being squeezed to Q1 and the price is higher than it would normally be. And that area, this triangle here, is known as the deadweight loss of consumer welfare. It's also called a, a Harburger Triangle, and it represents essentially the social cost of monopoly. So in this situation, if the output is reduced and the price is charged above marginal cost, it's good for the monopolist. They can earn some extra producer surplus. It's not good news for the consumer. Their consumer surplus goes down. And overall, welfare diminishes because price and output are not at their competitive level. How might a monopoly supply with an inelastic demand curve cause allocative inefficiency? If you're producing a good or service uh, where the demand is relatively price inelastic, and I've shown that uh, here, this is a much more inelastic demand curve. Can you see that, again, the original allocative efficient price is shown at the intersection between MC and uh, AR. In this situation, output squeezed to Q1 and the monopoly, because of low price elasticity, they can now charge a much higher price. Price is well above marginal cost. That generates a lot of producer surplus, a lot of profit. And in a sense, you lose some consumer welfare. Uh, typically, those products with a low price elasticity of demand tend to be what's called high markup goods. In fact, the lower the elasticity, the greater is the difference between price and cost. Think about uh, designer brands, Nike trainers, Burberry jackets, for example. Think about perhaps scarce vaccines, scarce pharmaceutical products, uh, where in theory the low elasticity would allow them to charge a higher price. Whether or not governments allow that to happen, of course, remains to be seen. And think about products where, again, there's an element of uh, conspicuous consumption, champagne, fine wines, expensive perfumes. The price you're being charged is way above the marginal cost of supply. In contrast, in a more contestable market, when there are more products for people to buy, when there's more substitutes, and when the cross price elasticity of demand is much higher, then we would draw the demand curve as relatively price elastic. And I've done this in this diagram. Can you see the difference between that? Let's go back a page. Between that diagram with a low elasticity compared with that diagram with a relatively high price elasticity. Well, the price is still above marginal cost, but only just so. So in a contestable market, competition tends to keep prices down and closer to that allocatively efficient level. Uh, these are tend to be low markup um, products in a highly contestable market. The difference between price and cost is relatively low. Often the profitability comes from selling huge amounts. So think about basic foods, cereal productions, uh, lots of staple products you might find in the supermarket, maybe mass-produced beers where there's lots of competition, intense competition between the various fast food restaurants might help to keep prices relatively low for, for their staple products. Either way, in this situation, the competition makes demand more price elastic, and it means that the monopoly price shown in this diagram at output Q1 is not massively above that of marginal and average cost. There is still a deadweight welfare loss because the price is above marginal cost. In the next video, we'll take a look at productive efficiency.